Maybe, I don't know. Um, I don't, I, I can't really tell here. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, maybe, maybe, I don't know whether or not you went through that. Doesn't look like, maybe, maybe, who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I suppose. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. We don't know why that is. Maybe. 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 Who knows? So I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of this that uh, we don't know the entire story. Hi guys, and um, welcome to uh, Grady Gem Update. Um, many of you might have seen uh, an incident that occurred, uh, and basically, I feel it right to give the genuine opinion and genuine, you know, actual incident information. So, what I'm going to do is, the video basically is what it is. It is me explaining what happened. Uh, it's me explaining my thought process. It's me explaining my decision making at the time. Um, and it's me trying to effectively stop any misinformation or lies that are just being said about this incident. You know, the, the real victims are the people who've lost cars and the vast majority i can't say enough about how they've conducted themselves and how they've conducted themselves with me so firstly i'll speak about the the situation the the points on that you know the value in the communication uh if you're here for the reaction to rattle uh, the timestamps below if that's all you care about go and look at that if you don't want to hear my genuine thoughts um and lastly i'll do a general update uh, for for Grady Gem in general, you know a lot of people, a lot a lot of you have cards with us still, and you know you need that point of trust that your cards will be returned. However, to start, I'm basically going to explain why I'm doing this video. I've got no need to do this video. I don't have to. The cards are coming back. We're getting them out. I've dealt with the claim. There's no real reason. Um, I'm and I, I asked myself this question last night. To be fair, um. Is it because I want a genuine explanation of the incident? Is it because I want to increase the communications? Is it because I want to save face? Is it because I want to make Grady Gem you know, have a better reputation? Um, and is it just to clarify misinformation? Or is it to, you know, getting on some drama that um, this, this rattle guy has uh, effectively given to me? But effectively, it boiled down to, I've just had enough of people saying I don't care. You know, I get Instagram messages saying I don't care. You know, all the time, that's, that's people's response. They just think I'm here. I'm just having everyone for a ride. Not everyone, to be fair. There's a lot of support as well. But, you know, that's 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 a big thing from, from some people. Um, I've wrote some notes here because I didn't want to forget anything. But effectively, this incident was horrific for all involved. And I understand probably just as much as anyone else, how horrific it is. I've been collecting myself for years, like seven years now. I know the value that you put on your cards. I know the value you put on your card. You opening them, you grading them, you getting a PSA 10 set. I know that better than anyone. I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't fight tooth and nail for this claim. I did. I went through many stressful conversations over the phone, over the email. I provided every single piece of information I could. I literally went, scoured eBay for these cards. I I wouldn't be doing the long hours. I wouldn't be doing six days a week to get returns out. I wouldn't have effectively allowed myself to become a punching bag, someone to blame, a company to blame for, you know, for PSA Related, you know, value charges, turnaround times, overall frustration. You know, you can ring me up 10 to 1, you can email, you can just be angry and I'll take it. I wouldn't have sacrificed other personal or business interests or with the intention of making the best of this awful situation. I wouldn't have personally called all affected submitters um, to give them the news directly, to own this, this incident, to own the responsibility uh, of, of what happened. I can say that I am honestly sorry this incident has occurred. And I can say I'm honestly sorry about, you know, maybe how Grady Gem played out. Um, as I wished and expected, you know, a lot more. I think maybe some submitters did. Um, just the winds changed so suddenly. It, I can't really speak much on that, but it just happened. And then... You know, I, I'm basically a glorified postman for the next two years of my life. Um, and I, 
I kind of want to clarify this. I'm not really expecting anyone to like me after this video. I don't really wish to be liked. Um, I just want an understanding that I genuinely do care. And I'm doing everything in my power. And I'm doing my utmost to get cards back. And, and, and you know, I'll give you my honest opinion. I, if you lost my cards, I wouldn't like you either. I wouldn't like you at all. I, you know, from a personal level. Um, I just can't accept the misinformation, the blatant lies, especially from this rat, Pokemon Rattle stated about myself and the company. And I can't just sit here and just allow it to be said. And then I'm just told that I'm a scammer, stole cards. I didn't do anything to rectify the situation. I didn't have the proper insurance in place. You know, those things are not true. So um, let's explain the incident. Many of you read through the statement, I believe. I think if you've watched the Pokemon Rattle video, you would. He also read it through with a nice biased commentary. Um, effectively, a parcel did go missing end of February 2021, and I don't want to minimise the what people have said, you know. But realistically, we sent 50,000 cards out in Feb 2021, and there was no way I was going to do a statement and say this is a tiny percentage of that. Like this matters; it matters to everyone involved. If we'd lost 10 cards coming back from PSA or going to PSA, I would I would want the same reaction. I'd want the same care. That's why no numbers are involved. We've sent half a million cards just from the UK to PSA over the last year. A huge operation that I think sometimes is just. You know, it just it's not thought about. What you're thinking about is your 10 cards, and that's fair enough, you know, but it's not as simple as that. There's so many processes, there's so much to do here to make sure, you know, it's just ran properly. Anyway, um, first of all, um, all affected people have been contacted. No one uh, hasn't been. You've had, I, I've called you all directly, or you've had the email. If you are affected and, you know, you haven't seen those communications, I apologise, but I've done my utmost to contact you um, and to give you it first hand. Um, and, you know, no one else is affected. You know, there's nothing else. That's it. Like, this is it. it it's an end to this. Um, you know, we, we've offered the claim values and 80% of those have been accepted so far in five days. 80%, you know. And from my position, I think if we'd given such an yeah, it's a horrible incident, but if I'd given such awful compensation, 80%, it'd be a lot lower, I would expect, anyway. Next, I want to explain the value, uh, how we came to that value with the insurance company, how that value was calculated for submitters. So, I'm just going to use broad numbers. Um, we, let's say, we tried to claim $100,000 uh, GBP, you know, uh, yen, it doesn't matter, 100000 I'm going to use simple numbers, 100000 from the insurers. Over the last eight months, I've been negotiating with the broker, the underwriter, who specialist specialist in this area, and they said this should be absolutely fine when the claim was going through. The insurance company picked up some new agents, legal term from absolutely nowhere and tried to basically say, oh, no, actually, it's all on the submitters. They should have had their own insurance. Uh, you know, it's actually, you're, not, you're just a bailey of the goods. Don't you worry about it. That's effectively what they said, and how awful would that have been? So what did we pay? So there's 100K. That's what we initially claimed for. That isn't what we claimed for, just an example. Let's say then the insurance company went, look, we'll meet you halfway. Here's your 50K. Then graded gem in this example, put another 50K in. There's your full claim value. And then we added 10% so to 110K in that example. That's not the true values. That It was nowhere near that as, as a value. But I'm just trying to give an example. It's, it's not the case where we got a partial settlement. You guys are getting that partial settlement. And here's, here's some chump 10% on top. That's not what happened. The next bit on the valuations is how the raw card prices were met. In April 2021, one of the big things was getting the information correct. So we had to scour our eBay for the sold listings of the cards near mint as the minimum condition. And then we found the median price. So a card is £5 uh, near mint at least. A card is £10 near mint at least. A card is £15 near mint at least. They're the same card. So then in that instance, we would have taken the £10 uh, value. That simple. So, and that had to be the case. The insurance company didn't, uh, want to, but didn't rely on our pre grades. They basically said, "Well, you, it's just an opinion. Everyone's got an opinion on cards." They they didn't know the cards. They don't know the cards. They don't know the difference between a Pikachu jungle to a Pikachu gold star. The values are hugely different. They don't have a clue. You know what? You know they don't know any of this information. We're giving all this information uh, for them to accept. Um, and I think I think one big thing is the cards were lost on the way. 
in raw card form. You know, in the FedEx Memphis distribution center. They weren't even in this country. You know, if it, if I could get them by flying over there, hell, I would have. But, you know, they're in FedEx Memphis distribution center. And we can only pay for the raw value. You know, and, and that's all the insurance can do. We can't pay for what a potential value it could have got from PSA. You know, that's just an opinion. The opinion is PSA's. PSA is the grading company. They would be the one that, that assigns the grade. They'd be the one that assigns the value. It just never, never got there. So how can we claim for something that never happened? It's an impossibility. It's not something that's, you know, I want to, I wanted to pay back as much as possible to these people, but to all of the people actually involved. But, you know, we can't pay on something that's never happened. And that, and that was set out in our terms. That was our responsibility. That is what we did. You know, we, we fought two for nail for it. And I, and I, and I made sure that we, we upheld our responsibilities. There might be some disagreements in how those were calculated. Uh, and, you know, I'll speak through those disagreements. But it was very difficult. Three, four months of this was wasted on getting that calculation agreed by the insurance company. It was, uh, but that happened. And that, that's an explanation on how we came to those values. And, you know, I, I really hope I've made it clear. We have done our responsibility. It, that's one of the reasons you sent me Graded Gem. If I was just your friend and I sent off the cards for you and they went last, pfft, we're a company. We had responsibilities and we've paid out on those responsibilities in full and then 10% gratuity on top. The next point is on the communication. And to be honest, this is where I expected... A lot of the response, either on video, either on Instagram or Facebook, wherever, to be at, you know, because this is a decision I had to make. I had to make this decision um, based on the whole operation, not just this incident. You know, it seems insensitive, but it is really is a zero point percentage. And that is insensitive. Uh, to those people but what what I've got to consider is the overall panic how this would have affected at this time dealers weren't getting subs back we weren't getting any submissions back you know if I just told everyone at the end of April the whole process was stressful the whole process was horrid why the hell would submitters want I mean I personally would have thought this way why would you want to be dragged through that you know or, or it's not going to help the situation. The incident happened, and then it's now between us and the insurance company. Nothing that uh, submitters could have provided would have changed the values. Nothing that it would have just been a horrid situation to drag everyone through. But, but I also see the other side. You know, uh, if you told everyone immediately, maybe some people would have been more understanding, um, uh, and maybe things could have played out differently or whatever. You know, I, I could see it both sides. You know, that, that's a decision I had to make. I had to make that decision based on the whole operation, um, how we were dealing with things at the time. This incident, you know, I, I had to make that decision. And uh, to be honest, if you, have a, if you have a disagreement with that, fair enough. You know, everyone's entitled to their opinion on that. This is, That's where I expected the backlash. I made that decision based on the whole operation and that incident. And I did not want to contact people, either by phone or email, because I wanted to upheld my responsibilities and say, your cards are lost, we have nothing to give you. And I think one of the big things there to remember is we don't make any money until a return is processed. Nothing. Otherwise, this is what it's me, me taking the money from submitter A to the person who's lost their cards. It's effectively theft. If you ask me, that would have been the bigger scandal than not than communicating later on with a genuine, you know, uh, conclusion, which is for submitters, it's there. I'm not saying it's the best. I'm not saying people should be happy. I definitely don't think people should be happy in, if they've been involved in the incident. I'm just saying, you know, that's the decision I made and I have to stand by that decision and I have to stand by that when I'm, I'm, I'm running Graded Gem and I'm running it for the next year, getting people's returns back and if you disagree with that, fair enough. You know, you're you're entitled to your opinion. I think I maybe rambled a bit. I've tried to tell you my piece. Uh, if there's anything else that needs confirming or clarifying in the comments, I'm going to do that. Um, I didn't really want to do the next bit. I didn't really want to speak about Pokemon Rattle in this way. He did a great show on the Logan Paul first edition thing. I just think this time around, he's not done any research. He didn't contact us, and he's just clickbaited the hell out of it without any substance. So I have to do the next bit to kind of defend myself and the operation. 
the guy didn't have a clue and I'm there to protect everyone as submitters and that's what I will do. Whether you agree with me or not, that's your decision. Um, so yeah, uh, reacting to Rattle. All right then guys, like I said, I don't really want to be doing this, but I can't just allow misinformation to be out there. So now I'm going to react to particular clips of what he said, uh, incorrectly said in most cases, and you know, give my honest thoughts on it directly. Their customers are not getting a full refund for the lost cards. Right. So uh, I think he's questioning whether they're getting a full refund for the lost cards. Uh, like I explained in the prior video, their people are getting the full raw value um, on a market price, 10% gratuity on top. And of course, anyone who's used the service is getting a refund the service that was not completed. So you've got your gratuity and you claim, and then you get a refund if you've paid any money. There's absolutely no way you can get away with just keeping people's money for a service not rendered. You have to absolutely prepare for the worst. We, we did. Um, I, preparing for the worst was my biggest concern when the hobby was blowing up in May, June. Something was brewing in 2020, and I could tell. And what did I do? Immediately, I went from courier-based insurance to an insurance policy. You know, I, um, I found eventually someone at a broker who understood how this process worked, who understood how raw cards go to a grading company in the US, and then they come back uh, graded, and that's a different value. It, w it took, I think it was, uh, you know, at least four or six weeks just to negotiate and get that sorted with the broker. Then we took it to the underwriter. You know, it was there. It was there as much and as good as anyone else could have done. A lot of hard work went into it. You know, like I said, the insurance company, I don't think they understood what they signed up for, not the other way around. Why do you not have some sort of emergency fund in case something isn't fully covered or if the process takes too long to save face with your customer base. Yeah, so this is an interesting one. Um, you know, the funds that we did have, obviously, submitters had paid us money, but we don't actually count anything as profit or revenue earned until an order's completed. Because otherwise, it's a very dangerous game You're using other people's money. I believe other services have, have, have fallen into this trap. Financial prudence and responsibility is at the core of my principles at Graded Gem. Uh, if we had decided end of April 2021, you know what? We'll just take the money from these submitters and give it to these submitters. I, 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 think, I think I said it before, but if you didn't watch it, I think that would have been a bigger issue. Personally, you know, my my that... That was a decision I made, uh, and personally, I think that was the right decision to make. You, you can't just pop up a tent and take, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars from people. Pop up a tent, I think it's, for most people, I, I think most people know, Greta Gem was the biggest submitter from the UK and EU. We also launched a US service that was absolutely massive for TCG. I, I don't really know the US side so well, um, but yeah, Greta Gem wasn't a pop-up shop. We had an uh, official dealership uh, with PSA. Uh, we were in communication with PSA once a month on video calls, spoke to many of the managers there. Like, we had a good rapport until everything, you know, didn't. Um, we weren't a pop-up shop, you know, and... We got the insurance there. The policy was there. You know, we were cheaper. The turnarounds did used to be quicker. I know that a lot of you haven't had that experience, but that's how it used to be. I've been running it for five years. The last year or two is just where demand exploded. You know, changed the winds of our relationship with PSA. But unfortunately, that's just where 95% of our customers ever come from because it just wasn't that popular. So... Yeah, a pop-up shop, I think, is I think it's just disrespectful to myself, really. I've been around long enough. I, you know, I know this guy from the Logan Paul, and that's it. I, I think he's been on some E4, but realistically, I, yeah, it's just not true. And they can't guarantee that your stuff even gets to PSA, so... Yeah, um, it's an interesting one, this. I, I don't think, unless you're literally walking your submission to PSA's office, no one can guarantee your cards will get there. All that can be done is the absolute utmost, especially on international shipping. At the end of the day, we sent hundreds of thousands of cards over there and crap, this incident happened. You know, um, we did our due diligence. We used what we thought was a, a very reasonable service, FedEx, uh, 24 hours. They normally got there in 48 after customs clearance, you know, at the very latest. It had been a service that worked for us. Just on this occasion, it hadn't. I, you know, I don't know if we'd sent with a different courier. I don't know if we'd done it on the next day, whether this incident still would have happened. I, I obviously look back at that. What if somehow I just held that package? 
you can do that with hindsight, but you know, I believe we did our due diligence. I believe we did our best to get all those cards out there, and and that happened. You're trying to make up for it, or you're seeing that you're to blame for this and responsible for it. To be fair, this is probably the comment I, I do agree with. I, you know, I am responsible for it. Graded Gem is responsible for those cards. Um, blame. Yeah, to a point, you know, we're responsible for those cards. Um, the FedEx, I think, is the main. Re should, he's the main person to blame, you know, the main company. Like, they just never should have lost the, a pass or, parcel, but they do. Couriers do. That That's a fact of life, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, I, I think we're stepping up to our responsibilities here, and I disagree with him saying if we're not. You also need to have something in place prior to, just in case something bad happens, that there is a declared value going in. Whether or not this is better to do through a separate insurance company or the insurance of a shipping provider. I don't know how much you guys know about insuring collectibles, but it's a very difficult thing to do. Uh, couriers won't just take face value. Like uh, like I said previously, Pikachu uh, base set is very different value to a Pikachu gold star. Couriers do not know slash care what the difference is. They just care that X item is worth this much. Very difficult to get courier insurance that is actually any good. So therefore, you have to get a policy. And, you know, learning from this experience, anyone you submit with to any company, you know, make sure that policy is ironclad. I have been here and I thought it was. And, you know, anyone who's in this situation, I would suggest you run through this. I would pretend that a parcel has gone missing with your insurance company. And I, I would I'd do it. I'd do a, a, a quick run. Look, the policy was there. It was meant to do what it did. It didn't do exactly what it did, but I think we upheld our responsibilities. Um, if you have thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars in a submission, and you're only going to get like 10% of that back. Yeah, and the, no one got 10% of their submission back um, or the, in value. I mean, that's just wildly unfair. It's, it's not, you know, 10% is the gratuity on top of the claim. Um, you know, it's just not a fact at all. It's just wild, baseless accusation, really. The last submissions represent only a tiny percentage of total submissions even sent in 2021. Not an excuse. It doesn't matter how small the percentage, how many were shipped successfully. This one's lost. The rest of them don't matter. This one matters. However, this makes the incident no less significant for those involved. Yes, thank you. What that clip does is show you how Pokemon Rattle, Rattle Pokemon, twisted our statement. It shows you the bias. The statement was already written. It was already written from me saying it. the amount doesn't matter. You know, if it's 10 or 100. But you can see he tries to make that point and then goes, yeah, thank you. It was there. It was there. If you watch that video, he twisted that statement. He made it totally biased. Um, that statement is concrete. And I think it shows you why he was there. He was there to create a, a video with lots of views. It was toxic. And it was just unfair to all the submitters involved in Graded Gem. All the submitters involved in this incident. But all submitters involved in Graded Gem at all. You're all trusting that I, in Graded Gem, will get your cards back. And you're listening to this guy. Uh, at this point, you're just holding out. Because you don't want to lose the money. Um, I think I've kind of explained this one already. It would have been theft to take. Uh, money from the submitters that had paid and given it to the people involved in the incident. You know, there's no revenue. We don't generate any revenue or profit until the orders are completed. I mean, that's the right way to do it. It's financially responsible. Um, and that's that. So we have a, a group post by Wayne here um, who says, if you use Graded Gem, guys, check on the status of your grading because I had a call today from Connor. They have lost my Feb 2021 sub, 100 cards, around 30 grand worth. They knew in April they were lost, yet only called today. Hundreds of people affected, apparently. 15,000 cards they didn't insure them properly. I've seen on other posts, and the insurance is not paying out, saying Grid Gem is liable. They have offered me three grand. So three grand on what um, he's saying is like 30 grand, pretty bad. Even you can top that off with 10%. You can top that off with 20%. It's still not going to do it. It's still nowhere close to this. That sucks for someone. It does suck. You know, for that that submitter involved, it sucked. You lost your cards, and I can never apologize enough for that. What I'm not going to do is go after someone who is involved in this submission and incident. Realistically, they're angry. You know, they've lost their cards. 
they are they're just putting numbers out there you know hundreds of thousands of pounds 15,000 cards like no one knows this information you know they're just angry and what they're doing is they're just saying oh they were worth 30 well I'm, you know they weren't you know they, they weren't that particular person has accepted our claim now yeah, you. If, if you didn't want to accept our claim, you could go the legal route. You could get a solicitor. Trust me, that costs a lot less than 27. The guy's just angry. You shouldn't be using unreliable sources from a statement. It why? And it's just lazy work, in my opinion. Like if if you want to, if you want to out someone, you want to show incompetence. Do it properly. You know, do the work. And get some proper statements of people affected, get a statement of everyone involved and do it properly. I just it just annoyed me this one because that guy has had a hard a torrid time and then you're twisting it. You're twisting it to just get extra views on YouTube. At the end here, by sending your details, you accept the claim. So trying to get themselves out of legal trouble here probably. Uh, by having people submit the claim rather than some sort of class action lawsuit that could potentially happen. Firstly, uh, a class action lawsuit doesn't happen in the UK. Uh, so, you know, the, basically what happens, you either say yes, no, yes, you get your funds back, you get your refund. I mean, that's kind of general procedure. If we, you know, we're paying out on an insurance claim, we need it to be accepted. We can't just send the money and then maybe you, you know, get a solicitor anyway. I mean, I mean that's kind of prudent. Um, if you say no, and you know, we have had no submit out yet, state categorically that is the case. Um, then you can go the legal route. You can go and get a solicitor. You can go say, I don't think this represents the market value of my cards. Um, fair enough. I'm not, again, I'm not going to go after any submitter who's involved in this incident at all. I'll quite happily spend all day on the phone with you. I'll quite happily answer your emails as, as well as I can. And I'm quite happy to give you my time. Um, yeah. There should be something noted when the card is being submit on, in terms of the value uh, what the expected grade is, or at least some sort of condition, like if it's mint, near mint, whatever. Um, so you can't go up recent eBay sold listings if you're going to go take cards that are bent in half versus someone submits something that's gem mint that has a potential for getting a PSA 10. It's not the same. I don't know how you would structure this. To clarify, the minimum listing, sold listings accepted uh, for the claim were near mint. You know, no bent in half. No, or nothing like that, you know, near mint, um, because then to mint, you know, and then we use the medium price, uh, you know, effectively, we, we submitted all that evidence, we had all the eBay sold listings, and it has the terms up, and that is exactly what we did. There's no question about that, you know, that is what happened. We fulfilled our responsibilities. No one ever said, yeah, I, I think the other point on the pre grades or the conditions, maybe we should have done before. That is just my opinion or our opinion, Grady Gem's opinion. It Anyone could grab a card and go, this is near mint, this is mint. How is an insurer or anyone supposed to pay out on that? You know, PSA or any grading company are the ones who give and allocate the value in the grade. And that's where that comes from. It doesn't come from an opinion from me, from Joe, from anyone. This person, sure, they didn't get boned for tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, I mean, I think kind of, there was a, a few people who got hit bad, real bad. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm working with them as well as I personally can. I, I kind of wanted to clarify, it's not, no one's lost tens of thousands of dollars. Um, you know, that that's not what's happened. It doesn't make it any less significant in my point of view, like a hundred pounds, 10 cards. You, you could have sent the, a card that you pulled from Vivid Voltage, you know, Celebi Amazing Rare that you really loved. It was the only pack that you got, has sentimental value, got it from a girlfriend. I don't know. That matters just as much to me as the financial value. Always has. I mean, go back and watch my videos. You know, the collecting was what the enjoyment came from. It's what the love of the, of the hobby came from. It's what I care about. And that's kind of why I have to shut this this uh, video down. Basically talking about how the relationship with PSA has broken down. We don't know why that is exactly. No. Um, and unfortunately, I can't state why. It's something that has been a battle for me and something that I have had to just allow in terms of submitters being angry and taking all the anger, taking the frustration. 
I legally cannot say a thing on the incidents. Not this incident, on the, the PSA relationship. Um, and I legally cannot defame PSA. Well, what you take from that is up to you. Uh, but I am protecting the submitter's interests and that's it, effectively. I'm willing to take everything else and bear that responsibility. So, I think, to conclude, he doesn't know. I don't know. Um, I don't, I, I can't really tell here. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, maybe, maybe, I don't know whether or not you went through that. Doesn't look like, maybe, maybe, who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I suppose. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. We don't know why that is. Maybe. 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 Who knows? So, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of this that uh, we don't know the entire story. 